next coyotes podcast brought to you by the one and only DraftKings sportsbook america's top rated sportsbook download today using code phnx place a one dollar bet on any nfl game and win a hundred dollars in free bets if either team scores a point it's just that easy welcome to episode 22 and a coyote who wore 22 you know, is no there's a lot i can't make it just one okay because you got mike gartner rick tockett claude lemieux Oof, those are some names and most re- more recently, Damon Lankow and Lee Stepniak all were 22. Wow. Some good names. You came very prepared for that Those one. are some three big names. Lee Stepniak, who's back with the organization now. Yeah. Another one of those good guys. And, yeah, well. good guy and who has played for – he pl- played for like half the NHL franchises. <laughs> that's that's his story. We, really. we have to that's tell the good guy does. story. We'll be, who's ever taken notes, make a note. The Rick Tockett good guy story. Rick Tockett good For guy. another day. Okay. okay. All right, we'll say that In the for coach's room. day. Well – But he's a good guy. Oh, well, well, it's another day. Oh, and Craig Cunningham briefly wore 22. Oh, yeah, that's significant. There's, a, there's another great guy. All right, well, He's a good guy. happy Friday, everyone. Good. Sorry. Oh, you're good. <laughs> Friday. Um, we made it. Leah Merrill is always yeah. joined by Craig Morgan and Steve Peters, but we also are joined by another special guest today. This is our first international call-in. <laughs> wow. This is the, for, for all of PHNX, I think. Breaking new ground every week here. Um, today we are joined by former Coyote, Redeem Verbata. Should we bring him in? Let's bring there him he in. is. Verby. <laughs> Redeem Verbata. Bedtime, Verby. Hey, guys. Oh, Audio. Yeah, about to. There he is. <laughs> is it late? What time is it there? It's like 10, 10 p.m. right now here. Way Jack. past my bedtime here. And Craig. <laughs> Craig's in bed by 8.30 on non-game all nights. Right, all right. All right. <laughs> you know, he, he's a smart guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, Verby, is, is the house finally quiet? Yeah, the house is quiet now. Kids kids are in bed. Uh, uh, everything is fine now. And how'd the team do? Uh, we won. We won uh, 4 nothing. so uh, all good today. All right. So, well, this is a good day to bring you in. Everybody knows, everybody that's watching this knows who you are already. Uh, one of our favorite former Coyotes. I, I think fans would agree with that. But we don't get to the chance to catch up with you that often. I, I probably talk with you more often than others. But why don't you catch our, our viewers, our listeners up on what you've been doing since you went back to your native Czech Republic? Well, this, this is our fourth year back. We are starting a, a fourth season if, if you will uh, so past three years uh, uh, I took the first half a year the first year uh, off uh, then jumped right in uh, I became a sports director for my uh, hometown team so I have uh, our pro team under me and and uh, plus the youth program so uh, that's that's on the hockey side then I have some other projects going uh, uh, outside of hockey. So uh, trying to keep, keep keep busy. Yeah. By the way, uh, and this is going to be a common thread in this show. Can you pronounce the name of your hometown for us? <laughs> <laughs> Mladá Boleslav. <laughs> yeah. uh, what? <laughs> yeah. Not yeah. Prague. That's what I'm going with. I'm not Prague. It's, it's, yeah. it's 30 minutes from Prague, so not, yeah. not too far. You get to Prague fairly frequently? Yeah, quite often. Yeah, it's uh, like I said, it's uh, thirty minutes away, and, and um, like I said, I have some business there, so so I, I get I have to go there uh, quite often. Verby, what does being a sports director encompass? What do you have to do for your hometown team? Well, put the team together, uh, put a strategy for for our youth program, and and try to connect it. You know, so we have we have our own. Um, homegrown uh, uh, guys playing for our men's team and and uh, you know so it's dealing with the players dealing with the agents uh, uh, you know just doing doing like re- regular hockey stuff 
plus I'm also coaching my my oldest son oldest son son's team uh, those are seventh graders so uh, yeah like I said I'm trying to keep trying to keep myself busy you know verbi we're gonna bounce around a lot about different topics mm-hmm. we got a lot to cover for for people that have known you here in the valley and you know you're back back home in the Czech Republic take us back to 2010 when the coyotes went to play in Prague against the Boston Bruins in actual regular season hockey games and you know we had three Czech players on the team at the time yourself Marty Hansel and Peter Pruka what was it like going back with an NHL team back to your home country well it was about this time right early early yep. October so uh, I've done that with with Tampa two years before that, so I kind of knew what uh, what it's all about. What I liked about uh, our trip with, with with Phoenix was that we didn't have uh, that many exhibition games as, as we had with Tampa. With with Tampa, we played in in Slovakia, we played in Germany, and it was too much travel and 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 everything. So with Phoenix, it was more relaxed. We only had one game on uh, Wednesday, I think. We came in on, on, on Monday and we had game in Latvia, yeah, Riga. I think on Wednesday. Riga, right. And uh, but besides that, we, we, we spent that time in, in, in Czech. So I think uh, everybody enjoyed it. Not just us uh, as a players, as a Czech guys, but I think everybody who made that trip uh, enjoyed it's that. For sure. It was a great city. But you yourself and, and what ended up being a Stanley Cup champion team, the Boston Bruins won the cup that year. And the Coyotes lower expectations that year actually beat them, and you end up with three points. Yeah, two goals and assist. Two goals and assist, and I think Peter Pruka got the winner. I think it was just an exceptional experience for the for the Czech players that got to go home and play in front of their hometown fan. Have we have we talked about the uh, yeah. dolls? Here, I don't know if you can way. see those on the oh. table. Actually, he can't. There he can. <laughs> I can see them. Yeah, yeah. I always knew those as as Russian stacking dolls, but they. I brought those home from Prague. That's one of the few things. Well, I'll say this: like you know, Bronco and Jimmy O'Neill, they made it a vacation. I actually worked because they were regular <laughs> season games, so I didn't go sightseeing as much. And that's the one thing I did bring home. And if we could turn, we can't turn it around. But they're Russian stacking dolls. And for some reason, in the Czech Republic, the smallest doll is Redeem Verbata. <laughs> we've, we've touched on this already. To me, that I means don't get it. It's he's the prize. The prize. He's, he's the prize, the prize he's on the inside. <laughs> you got to work. You get all the way inside, and there's Verbi. One thing, Verbi, you you came back to Arizona twice. You had two two trips into Arizona. And when you look back through your, you know, your long NHL career, over a thousand games, you scored twenty goals for the Coyotes five different times. You always seem to flourish here in the Valley. What was different about Arizona than some of your other stops around the league? What made this a good environment for Redeem Verbata? For some reason, it, it, it just worked. Uh, ever since I got there that first year, you know, under Wayne and, uh, and after it with, with Tip, you know, uh, not just the coaches, but the players and, and people around the team, everything, everything uh, kind of clicked for me. And, and uh, to be honest, I never wanted to leave. You know, every time there was that contract negotiations, uh, my first choice was to stay in in in, in Phoenix. Uh, there were always some issues with you know with uh, with ownership and a bit money and and uh, but I always made it clear that uh, it, it was my first choice to stay there. It, Couple of times it didn't work out that way, but I was always glad that uh, I was able to come back and, and you know play play those seasons in in, uh, in Phoenix. Herbie, you've said before that Tip in particular was a a coach who knew how to use you, how do you utilize your mm-hmm. talents the best? Uh, explain to that to all of us what that means. Well, if, that first year I, I really enjoyed the season under under Wayne because. For the first time in my career, he was the coach who kind of let me play and he let me do my things and and, and uh, didn't want to change me, you know, and that 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 was like a midpoint of my career where things kind of turned uh, to the good side, you know, where I, I really felt good about my game and, and, and I could show what I can do. And then with Tip, I think it, it only got better, you know, where, where he... He would really kind of know how to use his players, you know, to, to their advantage. 
and uh, uh, really helped that uh, that one year we we got, we got a wait uh, to play with me and Marty and 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 you know kind of take it to another level. So uh, like I said. With Wayne and with Tip, uh, I think all those seasons in, in Phoenix, you can you can see uh, that those were those those were probably the best seasons in my career. Hockey aside, what was your favorite part about living here in Phoenix or in Arizona in general? I think the weather, <laughs> and we we were living like all the other players in in Scottsdale, so just uh, it's a really nice place uh, to live, you know. Uh, Especially later when we had uh, when we had uh, kids and and the weather all year long was was great, uh, nice environment. Uh, I I never thought early in my career that I would be able to play in warm weather uh, city, but uh, that 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 opinion changed really quickly after we got to play in a few. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> That you mentioned that that we we got to talk about 2012 because it was obviously a magical season around here, the best in Coyotes history. But that line with Marty Hansel in the middle creating space for you guys, Wits as a playmaker. I think he had 77 points that season, and you had a career high 35 goals. Why did that group click so well? Oh. <laughs> Like for, for me personally, that line was exactly what you could wish for. You know, you you had big centerman in Marty who loves it, who could uh, win faceoffs and create space for 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 us. You know, on the wings, uh, with uh, experienced guy at that time, great playmaker. He always liked to pass a puck, so it was for me. It was just finding the right uh, openings, and and when I got a chance to 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 make sure that I I, I finish them, so. For us, that 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 was it was a perfect uh, combination for 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 me. Uh, and as a team, you know, I think we we had we had experienced team. You know, we had great goaltending. We had uh, uh, great experience uh, decor with you know with with uh, with also younger players like like uh, uh, OEL and and and. I think yeah, Jans was still fairly young, you know, at that time, and then I think Don Maloney added some 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 other guys during the season, you know, to 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 get us uh, well positioned into into playoffs. So uh, I think we had, we had really good mix and and good coaches, and I think it it showed that whole season and then in the playoffs. We talk about Marty Hansel, and you guys had. To... You know, you, you played on a line together almost the entirety that you were both here. Um, I looked at Marty and his development. He was kind of a skinnier, lanky kid when he first started. And by the time he left Arizona, like he was a physical force down the middle of the ice. If not for his injuries, I would have liked to have seen how his career ended up because he was really becoming a premier center in this league. And unfortunately, he, all the injuries. Do you stay in touch with Marty? Can you tell us what Marty's doing now? Do you see him ever? For sure. It was it was fun for me to, to see see his growth, you know, how he came in my first year in Phoenix uh, as, as a young guy. Uh, you know, he wasn't the, the, the hardest working kid out there, I think. But me and Z, we kind of try to you know uh, work on him and and get him appreciate the fact that he was a 20 year old in the NHL you know that uh, it wasn't happening on, on, on that many teams and and uh, I think he learned pretty quickly you know by the time I got there for uh, after the Tampa thing you know you could see that he was really important player for, for, for our team and, and he was for all those seasons he was there and like you said you know if it wasn't for his injuries I, I think uh, he, he could he could do more he was uh, I think very underrated player you know or, or underappreciated player because uh, for us uh, on a team we knew what how important he was for us you know he was playing against the best uh, uh, lines Every night he was playing against those best players, you know, back then. Datsyuk, I don't know, Thornton, you know, Getzlaff, um, 
Kopitar, Sedins, and he was able to 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 do a really good job against them. Plus, he had to do uh, things offensively also. So, I think everybody from that team or from that uh, era will tell you that uh, how important he was for us. And it was just you know it was just unfortunate thing that those injuries happened to him and he had to battle uh, through some stuff. All right, Furby, I got to ask, since we're talking about Czech players and that trip back in Prague in 2010, I've heard some stories about uh, some fun maybe that was had off of the ice when guys weren't playing. Petey's, Petey's climbing up over here, by the way. He doesn't want, <laughs> doesn't want to reveal anything. Uh, I never had any fun. Was, it, ring, was it strictly a business trip or were there other things happening in Prague, which is uh, – it can yes, be a it was just it, it was just a, it was just a hotel bus and uh, arena. That's it. <laughs> That's, <laughs> your That's what I told okay. everybody too, Verbi. Oh, yeah. He's just going to come on our show and flat out lie to us. But okay. I did go to when, when I was in Prague, and again, going a homecoming for redeem and new people and friends. I I did not expand my horizons. I went all my meals were at an English pub. That was just down the street and the Hard Rock Cafe. So I, I think I had in hamburgers Prague. literally every day in Prague. I know. I, I just, not very fun. Not a fun guy. <laughs> no, for us, it, it was a great time. We, I think we got there on Monday, I would say around noon. And we went right to practice. We went, we went we, we, yeah, we went to the hotel and then we went to practice. And everybody was like, all the coaches and everybody was like, hey, don't go to sleep too early because then you will be up. Uh, too early next morning so we took that to heart uh, i don't know if we went to sleep at all and then we had to practice <laughs> on tuesday morning right away so <laughs> what, what are great. some of the uh, uh some of the better sites or things that you can enjoy when you're in prague uh, <laughs> when you have a little bit of money too <laughs> yeah i think it's a, it's a great city uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, good restaurants. We were staying in the old part of the of the of the city, so you can walk pretty much everywhere. And uh, no, it, it was just it was just it was fun all, all around. I think. Then we then we had that on Thursday. I think we had that set up with with uh, uh, with the prime minister or something. You know, we had yeah. that dinner with with with, yeah. with with both teams. You know, wow. Boston guys were there. So yeah, was uh, that a was palace in, in or what castle. was that? Yeah, it was like yeah, some palace. Yeah, exactly. Oh. So that yeah, was actually pretty cool. I think, um, there were pictures. I had all overall. That. It was. I think yeah, it was a great I got trip. Some pictures. Yeah. yeah, it was. It was a really good. And we talk about the NHL making such a big effort to play games over in Europe, and it was a real driving force back then. Like there were at that particular year, I think there were six teams that went over to Europe and played mm -hmm. in different things. We've seen them play around the world. Uh, any idea, Craig, why that's tailed off? Well, I mean, very recently the pandemic, but yeah, I, I think they're they're looking at other ventures too. Look, they obviously want to play in China. They're that's on their their radar. They've done that already. I think the Beijing games are going to be another opportunity for them to to do it some more. And a, a story that I just actually posted on the on the website, um, they're looking to stage a game in Mexico. Probably, I, I would guess Mexico mm -hmm. City, but that's that's not determined yet. But that makes so much sense for trying to reach out to what has largely been an untapped Latino market. So I think we're going to see more of that, but they're just looking at different areas, different, you know, communities to, to reach out to. And Redeem, um, since you're from the Czech Republic and got to play a game there, what do you, what um, does it mean to the fans there? And like, what's the importance of having NHL games? I mean, obviously there's professional hockey all over Europe, but to have the NHL um do either exhibition or regular season games, what's the importance of having that there in those other countries for the NHL? Well, it happened a couple of times already. So I think it's great for, for younger kids to kind of see those players and what, what the NHL, NHL looks like. I know that the last time when uh, Chicago played here against, I don't know, maybe Philly, you know, you would you would have kids there at practice, and you would have uh, coaches from youth uh, youth teams to go see those practices, and and um, so I think it's big, also for for growth of hockey in 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 Czech. You know that little kids get to see guys who they only see on TV. Let's say you know. So uh, from this standpoint, it was great for for Czech uh, Czech 
hockey or, or, or younger players from the NHL. I guess it was just, you know, uh, showing the brand in, in, in the different, different, different uh, countries. You know, I, they did it in Sweden, Finland, uh, Czech, uh, I think Switzerland, you know, you had all those exhibition games, like, like, we, like we said, in Slovakia, uh, Latvia. So um, I think they were just trying to tap into new markets. What about for you personally to play in a game like that? Does it add pressure because you're a Czech player? Does it add a little bit of, of extra energy to want to perform on that sort of stage? It was a pressure early on to get all those tickets for, for my family and friends. <laughs> so I, I was trying to talk, talk to all the guys to get me the, the, their, their, their tickets. But uh, yeah, and you, you always uh, play while but especially when you when you're playing at home and, and it's a first game of the season and second game of the season you want to start the season right and and so so i was glad that first game that we played we, we won you know i was able to score a couple of goals and start the season right you know and 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 do it at home it was, it was extra special awesome well we have plenty to talk about still but before we do move on we just want to remind everyone that our show is brought to you by the DraftKings Sportsbook app, the official sports betting partner of the NFL. And as it is Friday, we always like to do our DraftKings pick of the week. And because our producer is the host of PHNX Bets, we the thought expert. we would just bring in the expert. Shane, why don't you give us your DraftKings pick of the week, please? Shane, do you have a mic, by the way? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I did this earlier on the Bet Show. This was my DraftKings pick of the week on the um, on the Bet Show. It's Carolina uh, minus three. They're at home, and they're only favored by three points against the Eagles. Um, and their defense is playing really well. I was talking about how Stephon Gilmore is coming there, even though he's not playing. It adds some intensity to the situation. So my DraftKings pick of the week. Carolina minus three, lock it up. All right. I'm going to lock it up literally right now. Oh, he's doing to show it you how live easy on the air. Is. Can we do that live if, on the air? Is if, there any... Yeah. And yeah. If, if PD can use technology yeah. live on the air, <laughs> it just goes you to show how easy the DraftKings Sportsbook app wow. is it's, it's, to use. You know, I relied on PD for a lot of technology. So, That's uh, true. I shouldn't a, tell you short. You were a, a video. video you were a video expert, yeah. but you know, what Twitter, is, Spotify, and yeah. maybe not as I much. I mean, Verbi, not as Verbi much. may disagree with the idea that you're a video. Expert, I tell you what, <laughs> when you get into the video work with Verbi, yeah. and he can attest to this, he's one of the few players. We talk about Chikrin now and Keller, and all these guys are so into watching their video. Verbi was one of the guys earlier before all that started happening that really utilized and liked to watch himself. Honestly, <laughs> he scored, he watched himself scoring goals and true. You watch yourself scoring goals 100%. and that's how you yeah. score more goals. Well, if you want to lock in Shane's pick, just like PD is doing right at this moment, you can do so on the DraftKings Sportsbook app. And new customers can bet just $1 on any NFL game and win $100 in free bets if either team on that bet scores a point, which is going to happen. So it's a can't miss offer. That's 21 and over. Arizona only. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 Next Step. New customers only. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. And Craig mentioned earlier in the show that he just posted a story literally right before we got on air today on gophnx.com about what it would take to stage a game in Mexico. And I was, if you want to read up on that, you can do so at gophnx.com. And if you are a member, you can have access. To that story and access to many other things like our members only discord members deals on shirts right now it's 20 percent off phnx shirts for members so a lot of great stuff on the website craig yeah for me i i, I wanted to ask you we, we talked a little bit about you being the sports director for your hometown whose name i still can't pronounce <laughs> um but you got a media venture going as well and i wanted to give you an opportunity to let everyone know what else you're doing? Uh, what what else you're doing to to maybe hurt others like me in the business <laughs> by, by taking away some of our market share? Well, we have this, we have this uh, website and, and, and thing that uh, it's similar to something like uh, the Players Tribune, where you know we do similar similar stories uh, with Czech athletes, and and uh, once a year we came out. With, with, with a book, you know, where those stories are in, and we have one feature, uh, feature story. Uh, we are doing some some documentaries, you know, uh, 
something like 24 7 you know so we, we 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 did one with the hockey team now we are finishing uh, uh soccer team we are about to shoot uh, another hockey team so um it's a little, little me media uh project and and um i think we've been doing this for the last five years and um it's getting better and better bigger and bigger so uh, hopefully we can we can keep that going and, and keep improving things and, uh, you know, uh, get bigger. <laughs> what, what inspired this in the first place? I, I'm guessing it wasn't working with me. <laughs> <laughs> Might've been. Yeah. Yeah. It inspires a lot of kids today. Yeah. Well, I had a friend, a journalist here in Czech and he, he, he came to me about my story and he started talking about what, what it's for. And I was like, oh, well, this is interesting. I, I know something similar is, is in the U.S. and it's working. And I, I, I like that. It's all, you know, if, if he needed some help just to let me know, he called back a couple of days later and, you know, we got going. And then, like I said, it's, it's, it's been four or five years and, uh, so far, so good. Yeah, there's some interesting profiles. Uh, a lot of a lot of hockey players that I know you profiled, and your own profile is in there as well. Now it's it's available both both in Czech and in English, right? It's gonna be in in, in English. Yeah, we we are we are just finishing things up on 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 that website that uh, we translated some 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 stories. Somebody somebody really good helped us uh, with that. Correct? <laughs> Shameless <Right>. plug. <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, I think it, it, sh it should be out, I don't, I think it will be like November, I think we're coming out with, with the English version, so uh, people can, can, people outside of Czech can, can read about uh, some interesting uh, Czech athletes. I definitely did not do the translation because <laughs> we, we can see how... how no, so no not, not the translation, but <laughs> you, you were a big help, so thank you for that. Yeah, so... As long as we have you and we're, we're on the topic of translations, pronunciations, uh, the last time we had you on the podcast, we had, uh, you read some pronunciations of Czech names and it was, it was <laughs> literally embarrassing how poorly <laughs> we pronounce the names, including your own. You, you read your, your name off to us and we all just sat there with open mouths like, okay, we've never said that before. So how, how often, Verbi, let me start with this. How often do you hear names just absolutely butchered when they're spoken in English? <laughs> I'm used to it. I, I was there for so many years, so I, I, I understand it's hard for you to for you guys to to get those uh, names right. And and uh, as long as it sounds, you know, firmly close, I think everybody's fine with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we've got and, and you've got to look at the Czech player history through the Coyotes organization. Some are easy, like Robert Lang. You got Peter Nedved. Mm. Like those are easy names. The most recent Czech players we have right now. There's two in the organization, both goaltenders, and uh, <laughs> Yosef K O R E N A R. Do you know who I'm talking yeah. about, Redim? How do you yeah. pronounce that name? Yosef Kozenas. See, how, how, Kozenas. Koz 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 yeah, exactly. in a name that doesn't have an <laughs> yeah. S. In it. Emphasis on certain syllables too that we always get wrong. Okay, that's impressive we we yeah. might have to come back here because we've talked about him a lot on the show and it's we're not even close we <laughs> I would, I would, and yeah, it's horrible. it's it, uh, should i say this it's karel vemelka is that right karel vemelka okay not, not bad, not bad. Pretty good on that one all right I do want to talk about one other hockey thing with redeem verbata and we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about it because it it became the thing of legend here in Coyote land to the point where Christian Dvorak started taking shootout <laughs> shots and they labeled it the reverse verbata. Reverse because, redeem. Re reverse <laughs> redeem. So it's the same move, different handed player with the exact same result. Scored five in a row, I think. You are one of the most prolific shootout players in the history of the National Hockey League. Not of the Coyotes, of the entire league. You had such success on it. And I remember watching over and over, you're gonna, is he going to do the move? Is he going to do the move? Everybody knew you were doing the move. Everybody in the building knew you were doing the move. The goalie knew you were doing the move. 
and you'd still <laughs> score. Is that something you had as a younger player and you progressed through, or you just build confidence by doing it over and over again? Or where did that move come from? I think there were there were lots of older Czech guys who were doing it on the national team. You know, you had, you had guys like like Robert Land. He, he used to do it. Uh, then we had Martin Prochaska. He was he was a guy who was in Nagano. He, he was a Czech player here who was doing it a lot. And um, lots of right-handed uh, players in Czech did that. So there was something that um, I was doing when I was younger. My brother, who was right-handed, he was doing it while he was playing. And over the years, I just, I just practiced that so many times over that uh, at some point I kind of got it to, 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 to think that it, that it was, you know, that I was able to, to score on it even when, when goalies knew that it was coming. And, and I know those goals, those goalies knew it because they told me, you know, like when I <laughs> was for it a bit too long ago, he was like, I knew it was coming, but you know, coaches told me before a game, but then it happened. You know? And later in my career, when 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 uh, goalie started to really cheat, you know, I would switch it to through forehand, and and that worked also. So uh, yeah, it was something that um, luckily was was working for me and 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 for us as a team because uh, you know those extra points that we got in in those shootouts, I think. Those years that we that we made playoffs uh, help us to to get to playoffs. Furby, I know I, I talked to you about this when I wrote the story on Dvorak, but when a guy knows it's coming, what what's the secret there? Why does it still work? What are you doing <laughs> that forces the goalie to respect whatever part of it and allows you to go to the back end and score? Well, later on, just it, it became mind games. You know, like like I said, I knew they knew they they. They knew that I know, <laughs> but, you know, they must be thinking, is he going to do it? You know, when, when, when he knows that I know, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a thing that when, when you go in that shootout, you know, I always came from, from each side, from, from right or left. So they have to respect, uh, uh, the shot. They have to respect that I would go to, to, to the air side. And when you do it right, you know, if, if you make them free for the, you know, for the second and you make that move uh, smoothly and quickly enough and you, you lift that puck up, then, then you have a chance. And like I said, and luckily I was, I was able to, to do it. Yeah, like you said, you got to sell the forehand, got to freeze them there. And then you have to be able to ele elevate the backhand. So follow-up question, you've, you've told me that literally if you execute it correctly, it's unstoppable. So why don't we see more guys using this move in the shootout? They should, for sure. Like, <laughs> like, like you guys said with Devo, he, he, he started doing it, he worked on it, obviously, and, and he was working for him. And, and even though he, he's, he slept handed, you know, I... It's it's a, it's a still a thing that uh, can work, and I'm I'm now teaching it to uh, uh, my son and and you know his his uh, <laughs> his teammates and you know and with little kids obviously you know the goalies are not that big so if they do it right they they have a chance to to, to score. <laughs> they have to lift it too big. Yeah. Like <laughs> or with the guys that have different hands, you do the Adrian a coin and just wind her up from the top it, of the circle, the closer. <laughs> exactly. Or if it, yeah. That's another choice. <laughs> oh my goodness! Well, we ha we actually um, asked um, our Twitter followers if they had any questions for you, which we will get to in a second. But before we do, and I'm glad you're here for this because, oh, as Kirby, you are oh. not ready for this. You are not ready for what you're about to hear. <sighs> Petey, obviously, as you know, has had a, a career change. He now is on, you know, the behind the camera and this sort of thing. And we have a sponsor that. PD does the ad reads for, and you get to be a front row seat to this. So, Furby, do you know what Manscaped is? <laughs> oh, <laughs> and then, and <laughs> clearly right. you do. <laughs> Support for the PHNX Coyotes podcast is brought to you by our friends at Manscaped, the leaders in male grooming. Their fourth generation performance package absolutely changed the grooming game, along with their redefined body wash to round out 
your private hygiene routine. Join the 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped and the 2 million partners who are glad they did. <laughs> Manscaped.com for 20% off plus free shipping with the code PHNX. Make your man parts as smooth as the Verbata shootout. <laughs> Beating goalies Whoa. as clean as your privates. No nicks, no cuts, no fuzzy nuts. Manscaped. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code PHNX at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code PHNX at manscaped.com. Keep your balls trimmed, fresh, and clean with Manscaped. <laughs> Are you still with us, Burby? Wow. Or did you pass out? <laughs> yeah, I, you know what? I think I see him going to the website right now. <laughs> That's how good that was. They, no. They that should sign you as their spokesperson. Yeah. What was wrong with that, Verbi? Not bad. Exactly. Yeah. No, it's, it's perfect. Yeah. Oh, my God. That was I'm, just glad, I'm just glad that I didn't have to read that. So, <laughs> <laughs> Got to pay the bills, Verbi. Oh, my goodness. Oh, for sure. 100%. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> right. well, we do have some questions from... Clearly, we have some questions as soon as we solicited them. We got a bunch, Yeah, right? we got a ton of questions. So um, you're going to be uh, giving direct feedback to our, our viewers now, Verbi. Yes. Okay. All right. First up, and just since we've been talking about the shootout move, um, Rob T. asked, um, did any of your teammates ask for help with copying your shootout move? Uh, I don't think they... I don't think they asked for it, but they they watched it. We we would do tons of shootouts uh, in the practice, so I'm sure guys uh, start working on it. And uh, before Devo, I think it was uh, Bots who was who was Michael Botker who was using that that move uh, quite often, and it also worked for him. So, um, like I said, I, I think it's a good move, and and it isn't like anything too special. You know, you, you can work on it and. and Make it work. Uh, you know, you don't you, you don't need to have hands like that. You you know, or, or, or Patrick Kane, who, who has you know hundred moves. You know, this is this is something that you can uh, you can work on and and and, and it can be successful for you. Um, Yo at Yotes Girl asked, what did you miss most about Czech when you were here, and what do you miss most about Arizona now that you're back in the Czech Republic? Oh. it's always the case of you know you can have or or you 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 wish for what you can have you know so when, when you're in when you were in the u.s you know you were making the stuff that you do here you know friends family stuff that you do over the summer now that we we've been here for for a couple of years and and can't couldn't travel last you know two years because of covid you you missed uh, the things that uh, you enjoyed in in US, you know. So w with Phoenix, obviously, like I said, the weather, especially now when uh, weather is changing and it's getting colder and 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 darker, uh, and it's gonna be that it's gonna be that uh, that you know for for next couple of months. So uh, weather definitely uh, during those winter months, and and also PD, right? <laughs> oh, you missed me, Verby. I know you do. <laughs> It is true, though, but now, because I've been away now for a year, and I'm sure you see this too, but you're around the rink more with your team. That's the part of it you miss. You don't miss the 18-hour yeah. work days and, and those mm -hmm. difficult times. You miss the camaraderie of having a cup of coffee with someone else and talking hockey. That's that's really the part that's hardest. I, I, I actually miss the road trips where you just, you know, you, you're on a for a course, uh, you know, you... you watch some some tv shows on, on a plane then you get to the hotel you go for dinner you know uh, you, you get away for for a little bit you know you have your 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 quiet time or, or you go out with, with with the guys you know that's that's something that i never thought i, I will say but uh, i i sometimes miss you know those road trips not those two week long road trips you know, <laughs> yeah where, through buffalo and yeah. ottawa <laughs> yeah five six games in, in ten in, you know, 10 days, but, uh, yeah, but that's, that's something I, I sometimes miss. Um, somebody asked what were, or not somebody at AZ hockey nut asked, um, what were your, what was your top memory from playing in Arizona? And it doesn't have to even be a hockey memory, but just your top memory from playing for the coyotes. 
Mm, like I said, pretty much every, every year that I was there, I personally had had a, had a good season, you know. So every season I can find something, some something special that happened uh, during that particular season, you know. Uh, we talked about that trip to Prague. We talked about that playoff run. I um, first year playing for Wayne. You know, uh, there, there, there's there's so many seasons and so many memories. So it's hard to pick just one. But there, there's there's lots of lots of good memories for me. Um, any other follow up questions before we let? Go. Burby go to bed because yeah. it's like yeah. going yeah. on 11 o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> Burby, honestly, for me personally, it's really great to see you again. We can go through the history of all the Same Cavs here, players Same here. that I saw go in and out the door, and you still are one of my favorites. You're a student of the game. You prepared the right way. You were a true professional inside that lo locker room at all times, and you were one heck of a hockey player. So I'm really glad we caught up. <laughs> Also, I a great interview. Appreciate it, Pete. Throw that in <laughs> yeah. from from a reporter and a lot, that covered Kirby for a while. And a lot of people online yeah. were saying that you're one of their favorite Coyotes players too. Just yeah. throwing that out uh, there too. Great to see you, Verby. Thank you. <laughs> Take care and get yeah, some sleep. Great. Thanks for having me. We can. We'll do. Thank you. Yeah, Thank we'll you. have you again, Verby. You're yeah. a friend of the show now. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Well, just let me know anytime. Awesome. All right, bud. Thanks again for joining us. Really appreciate it. Thanks, thanks guys. Great. That, was, that was awesome. Mm -hmm. that wow, was Craig. Awesome Thanks time. for setting that up. That yeah. was really cool. And we didn't get to show this while he was on, but let's pull up the pictures that PD sent from that Prague trip back in 2010. Oh, there's Redeem Verbata yeah. right there. The, the three checks on the team. Marty Hansel on the left, Verbi <laughs> in the middle, and Peter Pruka on the right. We uh, hope we pronounced that correctly. That was at that dinner that we talked about in the Palace of the, pr the Premier in yeah. the Czech Republic. Right. What else we got? <laughs> oh, that okay. I know hardly working. Remember, he said we went right from the plane ride. Yeah, we, that's the practice after we arrived. And getting from Phoenix, Arizona to Prague is not easy. No. We went through Halifax. Oh, it was God. a long, long <laughs> day. Yeah, we went through Halifax okay. to get there. So it was a long day, and that's the practice when we arrived. And I literally. <laughs> Don't remember it. I was a zombie. <laughs> like, that's hard. That is. That's yeah, a long that's day. That's rough. So that was that. And it, but it is the right approach, right? You get off the plane when you arrive. When, when you're going that direction, yeah. you gotta you gotta stay up. Gotta it was stay a great to get on the schedule right away. Otherwise, you just kill yourself. It was one of those things you look at and you dreaded the flight, and you go, "This is going to be miserable." And what a great life experience. So glad I had that opportunity to go do the things we did when we were in Prague. It was great. Yeah. yeah. Hoping I get to do it uh, in the coming seasons in yes. Mexico City, hopefully. Yes, and uh, or, or if Javier Gutierrez has his way, Guadalajara, oh. which is where he was born, so he'd love to see the game there. Yeah, that would be that would be awesome. And um, again, make sure to check out Craig's article on that. There's some cool um, graphics in there as well that shows the timeline of all the global series. Yeah, there's one, the NHL's Road to Mexico. You can see all of the international stops that the NHL has had um, along the way. We're looking ahead at Mexico. We're looking ahead at china for the olympics so a lot of great stuff ahead it's really great to see the game growing um globally um as we wrap up our show i just want to remind everyone that if you are not to please follow at phnx underscore coyotes on twitter if you missed it the other day um espo from the sun's show made a promise that if our twitter account hits five thousand followers by the end of the year he will put on goalie pads and take a slap shot from any player of our choice. So we want to see that happen. And I'm sure you do too. So please follow at PHNX underscore coyotes on Twitter. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell your neighbors, make burner accounts, do what <laughs> we need, do what needs to be done. So we Recruit. can, Recruit. so we can see that. <laughs> and also when you follow our Twitter, you get to see all the stuff we're up to. Um, not just, not just to see Espo take a slap shot, but that that's an added bonus. Um, and if you're watching us on YouTube, be sure to subscribe Follow at PHNX underscore sports, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Um, follow the three of us on Twitter, at Craig S. Morgan, at Leah Merrill, at S. Peters Hockey. If you're listening as a podcast, be sure to subscribe and follow. Am I missing anything? Well, next week, what are we going to be doing? We're going to be preview previewing the NHL season. I We're cannot believe there. it. We're almost yep. there. We're almost there, and I think that that's another thing for our – go phnx members there's a lot of stuff coming i mean we're finally getting to games there's going to be a lot more and different content more video stuff that we're going to bring mm -hmm. more stuff away from the studio post game so, post game stuff mm -hmm. so there's a lot more fun coming 
Yep. And we are very much looking forward to it. And we will be back next week. And it's NHL season next week. We made it. Have a good weekend. Have a good weekend. Thank you.